island of Grenada could have been a tropical paradise, but through mismanagement and foreign interference, it now has all the hallmarks of a nation that's fallen into a coma. continue to invade this outpost of the British Commonwealth. For seven years ago, it was an invasion of a different kind. And it left behind a third world country in the depths of despair. Grenada's flirtation with the Marxist government came to an end in 1983, when US troops flooded in. It's a lovely piece of real estate, remarked American Secretary of State George Shultz when U.S. forces arrived, supposedly to rescue Grenada from its radical turn. Millions of dollars were poured into the country. Its economy was reshaped according to principles of privatization, free trade, and market-driven development. In a few swift years, the U.S. worked to undo everything Grenada's 1979 socialist revolution had accomplished. Yet even with its tremendous influence and resources, the U.S. has been unable to produce genuine progress in a country of just 110,000 people. After six years of American stewardship, Grenada is deeper in debt than at any time in its past. Unemployment runs at around 30%, inflation about the same. Hard drug use, household burglary and violent street crime, all of which were rare a few years ago, are becoming widespread. <laughs> Residents feel abandoned by what was once their great white hope. Well, you see, the people don't even have hopes because we believe in democracy and the Americans made it clear that they are coming to help Grenada, help our economy, help the country. But the fact is that we have a wastage, a horrendous wastage of human resources. So how could we move forward? We are always dependent on it as a total nation. Since the breakdown of the socialist government and the subsequent invasion, the people have become noticeably depressed and angered. The greatest loss since 1983 appears to have been hope. Jobs that were created went to the lucky few. But an expanded government sector has proved extremely unproductive and corrupt. Still, there are a few who remain optimistic. People were very hopeful and people are still hopeful. Mm -hmm. Things are, you know, boosting up and lots of people are coming in and trying to look for investment possibilities. But the reality is that the Americans have brought window dressing and little real development. The future of this country hangs in the balance come March 13th. The decision you make will determine what happens, whether we continue along the road to progress, prosperity, stability, or whether we go back to the years of turmoil and chaos. Voters had a chance to try again during the March election, but there was not a lot to choose from. It was a poll without issues or much fanfare. For the most part, it was also an election without personalities. Five political parties, a record number, fielded candidates. But there was a feeling that no one had the vision to turn things round, and even if they did, they lacked the power to do so. Caribbean voters, fearing indecisive government, often opt for a single strong leader. But Grenadians have had their fill of that too. Among the new parties and offshoots of old ones was one that was familiar. It was thought and feared that the Grenada United Labour Party could be returned to power. Led by a blind and eccentric former dictator, Sir Eric Gehry, the party was amongst the most popular despite Sir Eric's reported obsession with flying saucers. Yet at the polls, there was no clear victor, and the country was thrown into a state of uncertainty. There's talk now of forming a coalition government and attempting to rescue Grenada again to try and save it from slipping into the kind of obscurity suffered by its Caribbean neighbors.
It now appears the barrier to a grand four-party coalition is not politics, but personal dislikes. Grenada has several would-be leaders, but voters have given the crown to none, and it's hard to imagine things changing in the future. We are looking for a better life in this country. That's what we need.